Hi, everybody. Welcome to episode two of the Your Relationship Workbench series. I'm Jeff Lawton, your host, and I am your relationship architect. And I started this series on Monday because I really, number one, want to make a positive contribution to people in these really difficult times that we're all going through at varying levels. And one of the things, because I'm a relationship coach and I'm pretty passionate about relationships, this seems like an all too important time to be offering people suggestions, observations, perspectives on what kinds of impact impacts are these times creating in our relationship with our loved ones if you're in a partnered romantic partnered relationship and if you're single i think this is still equally as important because it's directly impacting your relationship to yourself and it's directly impacting your relationship to life. So this series is really going to be an opportunity to be able to share how you can navigate some of the unique challenges that I think this is already presenting, given that we're already living at home with our partners. And if you have children, having that going on too. And so <clears throat> this is meant to be able to give you real things that you can try, practical, pragmatic things. So on Monday, which was our first episode, that was the title of that episode was what the f is really going on. And I just want to review in one or two sentences that my key take on all that is that we are being given, albeit through horrible, horrible circumstances, we're being given an opportunity personally, emotionally, mentally, psychologically, culturally, societally. We're all being given this amazing opportunity to do a reset reset our perception of ourselves, reset how we do our life, maybe reset going from doing to being. All right, I went over two sentences. I have a bad habit of doing that. Anyway, that's really the overall gist that I see that this whole pandemic is affording us. Today, I wanted to talk about who are you anyway? And here's what prompted me to want to talk about that real quick. On Facebook over the last couple weeks, there's obviously been a lot of memes, some of which are pretty funny. And I've been noticing that more memes have been showing up in my feed. And yes, they're funny in kind of a black humor way. I posted one of them earlier this morning it's here in the group. And I've noticed this trend, which is it usually, they are usually written from a woman's perspective about her man. And it's not favorable. And I'm certainly not going to pretend that men don't have their faults and their weaknesses and it just made me think why is all there this man bashing and then i saw a post yesterday which i shared in the group yesterday about from a woman who was sharing how sick and tired she was of having women bashing on their husbands and from her perspective having lost her husband a couple years ago and that she'd give anything to have him back, that it was just hard to understand 
why are people living with people that you don't really want to be living with or loving? So that really engendered the idea for me that one thing that's happening is we're all learning, those of us that are in a relationship, we are learning things about each other, particularly behaviors or, you know, little tics or habits that are annoying that we've kind of probably have found a way to ignore in the past because we weren't around them all the time. We go to work. Now we're at work, at home, if you're fortunate enough to have work. And if you're one of those unfortunate people who are struggling because you're out of work right now, then that adds, having lived through that once in my life, that adds an enormous amount of stress and pressure. So I want to suggest that we don't really know our partners as much as we think we do. And this quarantine is bringing it right here in our face, just how much we don't know them. But here's the other opportunity. It's revealing what there is to learn about them that could be incredible. It could be beautiful to learn. But there's going to be some potholes along the way. So I want to just pause for a second and say that my attempt to do this on Zoom failed miserably about half an hour ago. And so if you have questions, you're able to put those questions in the comments and I'm happy to answer them. And by Friday, everything should be sorted out where we can see each other and interact in real time face to face in this weird virtual way. So if you have questions or comments, and I'll assume that you'd prefer to be anonymous for right now, then please feel free to put them in and I will read them and answer them and um, I won't use your name. If uh, I'll just start there. If you're okay with me using your name, include that in the comment. All right, so back to what I was saying. The great opportunity, and if you're single, this is an opportunity for you to deal with your relationship with yourself. This opportunity is to find out what's ready to change. What has, without you realizing it, or maybe you were realizing it, but you just weren't being honest with yourself or each other, stuff that's been breaking down and not been good for a while. Now is your opportunity to muster up your courage and your self-awareness and your integrity and start seeing, all right, what are the things that need to be repaired? Or maybe just out and out, remodeled, redesigned, remodeled, rebuilt, renovated. Pick your metaphor. But what needs to change? Now, for some of you, that's going to be coming to grips with the fact that perhaps your relationship is already DOA and nobody's telling the truth about it. So while this is not a time to necessarily make radical changes, I think it is a time for us to be striving to get a much bigger picture of the truth, good, bad, or ugly, about us, our relationship, our families. And if you do love your partner, if you do care about the health of your relationship, then this quarantine time is a perfect time to start really taking that on if you can make the bandwidth. 
So the first tip I want to offer you is if you're really struggling with your partner, the first thing I want you to look at is where is your issue with them? Where is that about you? Don't start trying to fix them or bash them without looking at what is your responsibility for this state of affairs. Ask yourself this question. If you're being in a certain, take two, if you're getting triggered and plugged in a lot by your partner, then the question you should be asking is, how am I showing up? How am I being such that my partner is having this consistent reaction to me? Because I promise you, it has mostly everything to do with you and not them. So that could mean that you're, you have needs or wants, expectations that aren't getting met. And this quarantine is blowing them up to mega size. And you haven't stopped to think that maybe you haven't shared with your partner what those needs or wants are now. Because they're different now. What we need now in this time is not the same as what it may be. I mean, there might be some that are, but if your life is anything like my life, there's some needs I'm noticing I have right now living in this quarantine that I didn't have before. So look at what is it that, so this is really the second exercise you can do, what are your needs now? If you haven't really asked yourself that in a while, particularly your needs in your relationship, now's a good time. And then invite your partner to do the same. Again, if you're single, look at where you've been hiding and been in denial about your own frustration with how fulfilled you are in your life, that maybe you've been thinking a relationship would fix, and you've had some experiences that they haven't. And now you're single and you're staying at home. That brings up all kinds of stuff, doesn't it? So start there. Invite your partner if you're in a relationship to do the same. And then when you have some space, and sometimes you guys, we need to make the space, share what those are. Do it from a place of taking complete responsibility that these are my needs, my wants. Here's what I've kind of been expecting from you that I haven't really been communicating. So I'm wanting to communicate them now so that we could use this time to really look at what growth opportunities are there in our relationship that can make us happier together, more functional, more fulfilled as individuals and as a couple. So that's something that I would really invite you to look at and share. Now I said when you can make the time. And the thing I want to say about that is, you know, for me, Sarah and I have been working from home for 20 years. So I'm used to this, even though I really miss being able to, you know, hold people and, you know, connect with the other people I love too. But it really is bringing up that in this time of isolation that we need to go outside the comfort zone 
And so this is a great exercise to do it with. Find out what you didn't know that you didn't know. And if you are working from home and you have kids, I'm not going to blow smoke. It's hard to find time to have conversations like this or to even do the exercise. But as one of my teachers said to me last week, we have never had an opportunity like this. We may never have an opportunity like this where we actually have so many distractions other than what you're binge watching or surfing on the net, but a huge chunk of distractions and cover-ups and hiding places, they've all been shot to shit. So why not seize that as an opportunity to proactively find a way to make time to look at what we're needing, to start practicing making requests. How often do you actually make a direct loving request for something? If you're not used to doing that with each other, this is a good time to start. This is an opportunity to relearn yourself and each other. So another thing that might make it easy or easier is to start with seeing again, how well do you know yourself? So I actually have a little worksheet that I'm happy to send to people if you want to really do a fresh inventory of yourself and how well you really know yourself, you can also use to gauge how well you know your partner, then just either direct message me here in Facebook or send me an email at Jeff, G-E-O-F-F, -F, at yourrelationshiparchitect.com and I'll send it to you. Lastly, I want to say, and I, I know this is a tall order. There is so much pain and suffering going on in so many people's lives. So again, I'm not, I'm not going to be a Pollyanna about that. I know that's happening. It's happening with people I love. So in adversity like this, this is a time that we can really rise above our limitations, limiting beliefs, and see what we're really made of next. And one of the hardest things about that is to find the capacity for compassion patience but and i wish i had a magic bullet that you know you could or a magic pill you could just take and have all that your intention and your commitment is what you're going to need to help bring that up start with self-compassion if you're scared half to death because you're out of work and you don't know if you're going to eat you have to give yourself room to feel that. Don't live in it, but feel it and let it move out by redirecting your attention to what's good and positive right now. If you're unfortunate enough to lose a loved one, which thousands and thousands of people are, Grief is essential, it's normal, and the necessities of life 
may mean that you got to put it aside. Just don't forget to go back to it. So be kind with yourself. If you have to reveal a tough truth to your partner, look for how you can do it kindly. If you find yourself in that boat, again, just message me and let me know. I'm happy to give you a, a framework that you can use to do that with. And if you're not having a lot of conflict, awesome. Then this is the time to love on your partner more. To really take sober stock of what you really do love about your partner. That living together full time right now is illuminating. So feed more energy into that. Even if you're cooking together for the kids. Or you're splitting up who does homework with the kids and all that. Look for the little touches of affection and I acknowledgement. Acknowledging your partner just with the eyes. I have a lot more to share about all that as we proceed over the next few weeks. So let me just tell you Friday's episode is going to be Who Are You Really? Part 2 where I'm going to have my good friend, Tracy Lutz. And unlike a lot of people who send emails to their tribe about my good friend, Tracy really is a good friend of mine. We've known each other, God, 18 years. And Tracy is a phenomenal parenting coach. She coaches parents on how to work with their kids. She coaches teenagers directly. She's phenomenal. So she's going to join me here on Friday and um, offer some great tips about how you as a family can create something that she calls a design alliance, where you're getting closer, you're getting more functional, and you're getting more connected. Because what are we all wanting the most right now? besides maybe economic stability for many, connection. We want to be connected. So come at noon Mountain Time again and hear what Tracy has to offer about how you can take care of your kids and your family in a healthy way in these bizarre times. All right. I'm done sharing what I have to share. Any of you that might be here live that want to ask a question or offer a comment, just type it in the comment box and I'll see if any pop up. And if you're watching the video of this after the fact, firstly, thank you. Secondly, if you've got questions that you want Tracy to answer on Friday. If you're someone who has kids at home of any age, then um, messenger me those questions. And if you have other feedback, um, specific topics that you want me to address, then please go ahead and if you're comfortable putting them in the group, this is a private group, then put them in the group. And if you're not comfortable with that, messenger me and I'll address them. All right, we have a question from Marla. What's a polite way to say you need a timeout? So I'm guessing you want an alternative to would you just shut the hell up and leave me alone? Um, not good. Wouldn't be atypical in these times, from what I'm hearing. But I'd say a polite, don't worry about being polite. Focus on being kind and honest. So the way I do it, because I need timeouts, is I'll say to Sarah, you know, I'm really full 
I'm out of gas, and I just need some recharge time. So I'm going to go take a time out. I'm going to go, well, before the quarantine, sometimes for me, that would be going out to a movie by myself, or I go for a hike. So just tell the truth. This is not about you. I need a breather. And I know you're going to need breathers, so you can also make it explicitly clear that you get, you want your partner to have what you're needing as well. So just say, I need this right now. I'll be back in an hour or whatever it is. And end it with, thank you for getting it. I love you. I'll be back. And then make sure that you come back. So, did that answer your question? Okay, I'm gonna guess it did. Thank you for asking. Anyone else have a question? All right, so for those of you watching the recording, thank you. For those of you who are here live, including you, Marla, thank you. Sweet to have you here. And um, my, my apologies for this not working right at noon. So um, please bear with me while my team and I work out the kinks. So be good to yourself. Love on yourself. Be patient with yourself and extend the same thing to your partner. All right, everybody. Take care. Stay safe. Stay home. Stay well. See you Friday. Bye-bye.